So you guys know by now that uh, CNN and Joe Rogan have been going at it. Joe Rogan had Sanjay Gupta on his podcast and basically called out CNN to Sanjay Gupta's face and said, hey man, they were lying about me when they said I was taking horse dewormer. Uh, I was taking the human version of ivermectin, obviously not the veterinary version. Now, uh, to be fair, there's really no good evidence to suggest that ivermectin works against COVID. At best, it's inconclusive. At worst, it just doesn't work. It's sort of in a hydroxychloroquine type situation. Um, it's, for whatever reason, become a big part of, like, the culture war to talk about certain medicines as if, like, it's a right or left position. But, um... CNN overreached in their attack of, of Joe Rogan and said, you know, he's taking horse dewormer and that got under his skin massively. And uh, so Sanjay Gupta and him went back and forth on that. Sanjay basically admitted like, yeah, CNN shouldn't have said that. Um, well, since then, it's been it's been getting more and more embarrassing for CNN because uh, Sanjay Gupta went on Don Lemon's show where Don Lemon uh, tried to make a silly defense of CNN and basically say like, well, it's not really a lie because it is used for veterinary reasons, too. And, I mean, that's just such a Weasley argument because the fact of the matter is, guys, probably most medications are used uh, both in humans and animals. If you've ever taken your dog for a surgery, they have, like, you know, doggy benzos and doggy painkillers that are very similar uh, to the stuff they use on humans. Now, nobody says if you could get a prescription for Xanax, it's like, you know, a uh, cat tranquilizer being used by whatever person. It, it just, it's such a reach, and it's so obvious they don't like Joe Rogan, so they wanted to frame the story in as negative a possible light. Now, by the way, that doesn't mean that there weren't some people taking the veterinary version of ivermectin. There were, and there was an uptick in, you know, calls to poison control centers in Utah for one, among other places. And so, is it an issue that some people were using the vet version of ivermectin and they shouldn't be? Well, yes, but that wasn't Joe Rogan. And so, I think it's unfair to just lump him in uh, just because they want to own him and they want to attack him. Well, guess what? After the embarrassing segment where Don Lemon tried to defend CNN's actions, um, now CNN released another statement to the Washington Post, and they basically tripled down. So take a look at this. The heart of this debate, this is a, from CNN's PR department, the heart of this debate has been purposely confused and ultimately lost. By the way, that's true, but the ones who have been confusing it is CNN. It's never been about livestock versus human dosage of ivermectin. The issue is that a powerful voice in the media, who by example and through his platform, so doubt in the proven and approved science of vaccines while promoting the use of an unproven treatment for COVID-19, a drug developed to ward off parasites in farm animals. The only thing CNN did wrong here was bruise the ego of a popular podcaster who published dangerous conspiracy theories and risked the lives of millions of people in doing so. So, in other words, uh, they're not saying the obvious thing, which is they effectively waged a war on nuance. CNN likes to pride themselves in this idea of, like, Facts first. Remember when they ran that smug-ass commercial that was like, this is an apple. This is not an orange. This is not a banana. This is an apple. Because we believe in facts here at CNN. <laughs> Remember when they ran that commercial? I'm obviously paraphrasing it. I don't know if that was exactly uh, the way it was phrased, but... When you look at a commercial like that, you go, okay, if I take them at face value, which you shouldn't, but if I take them at face value, what they're saying is... We're going to give you all the ins and outs. We're going to give you all the details. We're not going to hide the nuance. We're going to put everything up, uh, you know, front and center and let you know that this is how the world is and then you react accordingly. But in the case of this Rogan fiasco, they didn't do that. It's very misleading and it's very disingenuous to discuss this topic the way they're discussing it. And the sad thing is, it's not like there weren't legitimate criticisms of Joe Rogan. I know there are legitimate criticisms of Joe Rogan. I made them. So, when he gave his uh, cocktail of medications that he said he took because he wanted to throw the kitchen sink at COVID when he learned he had it, uh, yeah, most of them have a lot of science backing them. Um, and, for example, he took the, uh, the Regeneron treatment, the monoclonal antibodies. That's one of the treatments that helped Trump rebound when Trump wasn't doing well. Um, but one of the things I said is I wouldn't have had ivermectin in the rotation in the same way I wouldn't have had hydroxychloroquine in the rotation. The other area where you can disagree with Joe is that Joe... Uh, you know, got a lot of blowback, I think rightfully so, when he argued, well, you know, young healthy people don't need to take the vaccine. And he misunderstood the fact that we're not saying they need to take the vaccine to protect themselves, because yes, it's true that if you're younger, 
you're overwhelmingly likely to survive this and be okay. It's about herd immunity. So in other words, you want to make sure that you get the vaccine so that you don't pass it to grandma or grandpa or mom or dad who might have a comorbidity or three comorbidities or they might be obese or whatever it might be. And so it's important to reach herd immunity. It's important for them to get the vaccine for that reason. He's also worried about, you know, the studies that show there's some myocarditis in young people who get the vaccine. But the, the part of that that he's missing is that there's also myo myocarditis uh, associated with COVID. In fact, more so if you get COVID than the myocarditis associated with the vaccine. So that's not a good objection to, you know, whatever, 12 and up getting the vaccine. I think now they may have lowered it to even five and up, uh, if I'm not mistaken, or they're about to do that. So there were areas to disagree with Joe Rogan. You easily could have made the point that, hey, uh, Joe Rogan is taking the human version of ivermectin, uh, but at best it's inconclusive whether or not that works. At worst, it just doesn't work. Uh, but hey, here are the other drugs in his rotation. There's evidence that these do work. And But having said all that, Maybe he should tread carefully because some people are taking the veterinary version of ivermectin and he doesn't want to inadvertently, uh, you know, maybe push some people in that direction, even though that's not his intention. Um, and again, you could have criticized the vaccine statement that I just criticized. But instead of going through all the ins and outs of the commentary, what they did is they took out, you know, uh, a mallet and a blowtorch and a crowbar and they swung it at his face. And when you go at the number one podcaster on the planet with the biggest audience... Uh, where he's developed so much trust with the colossal number of people, everybody's going to look at you like, why are you lying? Why are you misleading people? Why are you not giving all the information? Why are you uh, actively hostile to the complexity of the conversation at hand? And it, now, this is what's happening as a result of it. Now, they triple down, and, you know, the entire time, it, they're not really holding their own in this discussion, in this debate. So guess what? Guess what? Now, um, the Washington Post, which is an establishment rag, just like the New York Times is, um, they've now released two pieces where they say, hey, CNN, chill the fuck out. You're not right about this, and you're actively being hostile. So I'll just give you uh, one of the titles here. This is uh, one, an opinion piece in the Washington Post. The media slant on Joe Rogan and COVID has been wrong. Journalists must do better. That's just one piece. There was another one by Eric Wemple, and he, in in a more nuanced way, he effectively argued the same thing, that mm, Joe Rogan's kind of right in this, and CNN is massively overreaching. And so here we are. Now we're at a place where, even when they get caught red-handed being misleading on a topic, they dig their hole deeper. They double down. They triple down. They'll probably quadruple down. And you're, you're hurting nobody but yourself, guys, CNN. Now, listen, if you watch this show, you've lost trust in mainstream media a long time ago. Uh, you know, you know that they basically pushed us into every single war. Um, they've lied about virtually everything under the sun. They act like stenographers to the intelligence agencies and uh, the Pentagon. And they give their twisted version of events. You know, another example, by the way, is the Wall Street Journal just ran an op-ed basically saying... Iran's trying to get a nuke, and if they get it, they'll use it on us. Okay, well, this is just like Saddam Hussein, you know, Iraq, weapons of mass destruction, all over again. So, it, you, you shouldn't trust the media in the first place. But now, they're at the place where, eventually, you know, they had to admit, like, okay, we were wrong about Iraq. Now, they're at the place where they keep getting caught red-handed, and uh, CNN kept doubling down. And now, so even other shitty rags are coming out and saying, relax a little bit. Relax a little bit. And I, I don't know why Washington Post and some of the people there are choosing to be honest about this now, but I think part of it might just be a Hail Mary in the sense that these are people who understand that the trust in media is at a record low right now, and that with stuff like this, it's going to get lower and lower and lower and lower. And they need to do something to try to stop the bleeding. I mean, they're on the ground and they're bleeding out, and there's a just a total collapse in trust in our institutions, and that's earned. It's earned. And I don't want that to be the case. I wish the media did a good job, but they don't. And I think a lot of it really does stem from the fact that um, a lot of the traditional elite media types have sort of typecast Joe Rogan as Trump supporter, right winger. And so they feel like they get a pass to just lie about him. And But they also just misread Joe Rogan massively. Joe Rogan, when you actually go through the policy positions with him, 
and I know because obviously I've been on his uh, show a number of times, he'll tell you, and, and he repeats, even in the podcast with Sanjay Gupta, he went down the list and repeated it. This is a guy who's in favor of legalizing drugs. This is a guy who's in favor of raising the minimum wage. This is a guy who's in favor of universal health care. Now, you know, look, it sometimes on culture war issues, does he lean right in the sense that he talks about the the overreaches of wokeness? Well, of course, but I, I would argue that's not even necessarily just um, a, a right-wing take. That if you're standing against any kind of authoritarianism that's an inherently libertarian view, and there's both the libertarian right and the libertarian left, so that's not even an inherently right-wing thing, but the people in the media are so dumb that if they see some critique of wokeness, they think, think this is a right-winger. Who did Joe Rogan support in the last presidential race? Well, first he gave an endorsement of Tulsi, and then eventually he said, I'm probably going to vote for Bernie. And they look at that and they go, well, since he's critical of corporate Democrats, uh, uh, we just get, are going to typecast him as a Trump supporter. And they think he's a hardcore MAGA guy, and so they just go out there and lie. And they think that attacking Joe Rogan is akin to, like, attacking Fox News or something. But what, you know, they're realizing, or at least some of the people at the Washington Post are realizing, is that you're attacking the number one podcaster in the world who has an averse, a diverse array of people in the audience of all political persuasions, and now all of them are looking at you like, why are you doing this? So, again, it's not to say there's no legitimate criticisms of Joe. Of course there are, and I've made them, and I'll continue to make them when I think they're merited. But I don't think anybody can deny that what CNN did here is basically a war on nuance. They wanted to own Rogan, and so they said he's taking horse paste, he's taking a horse dewormer, and um, they've dug the hole so deep that now even other elite media rags are like, reel it in a little bit, dog, reel it in. So, I mean, if anything, the, the silver lining in this whole conversation is this, that now a lot more people have maybe woken up to the fact that y you can't trust mainstream media. You can't. And it's a tragedy because what often happens is because there's a complete lack of trust in our traditional institutions now, people turn to alternative sources which also were packed full of charlatans and con men and frauds. And so they don't realize it, but just by virtue of the way that they're acting here, they're boosting a lot of nefarious, terrible actors who portray themselves as the antidote to mainstream media lies. But it's not true because the outlets that are portraying themselves as the solution also have a terrible track record, whether it be Newsmax or One American News Network or like Daily Wire or Daily Caller or whatever. They're arguably even more incorrect about shit. And obviously, if you watch this show, you know that because I've broken it down in tremendous detail how wrong they are about almost everything. So, um, it sucks, man. We, we're, in, we're not in a good place right now. And I don't think people even know where to turn to get information that they trust. To get information that's verifiable and provable and everything seems to be hyper-politicized and a lot of people in the media seem to, you know, make decisions based off personal grudges and that's not good. That's really not good. So CNN triples down. They're only going to hurt themselves even more. And um, I think it's time that everybody realizes that um, my general view, and you guys know this, is you should be skeptical of everything and everyone. Um, I wouldn't go as far as to say you should be cynical because I think that's that overreaches. Uh, but be skeptical of everything and everyone and try to come to your own conclusion based on whatever the data is with the conversation at hand. And that's all you can do. That's all you can do. But obviously, we're living in a bit of a an information desert because the people who we're supposed to be relying on to give us news, information, education, are uh, they have their own personal biases and their own axe to grind. And um, it's never been more apparent than it is right now. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.